Welcome to another Nonsense Wars production. Today we look at set 3800, the final expansion for the original LEGO Mindstorms. The Ultimate Builder set came out in 2001 and cost $60. It contained 321 parts, bringing usable part count past 1,000 when combined with the base RIS inventory. This set has more in common with the 2.0 update and differs significantly from the original RIS and early expansions. I want to briefly mention the aforementioned original expansions, Robo Sports and Extreme Creatures. These sets much more closely match the tone of the 1.0, from the pick and choose layout of the UI to the open endedness of the challenges. Users had to implement robots without complete instructions and potentially even change the sample code. Even the later Exploration Mars at least began to structure the order of projects. On to the Ultimate Builder set. We installed it on our usual Windows XP laptop and it installed without a hitch. Surprisingly, the program did not have a traditional startup movie, and we also had to retype our username. An introductory video does start playing upon login, but it simply features a guy talking, and I will include some clips of all this talking at the end. For now, the main menu has three buttons, Projects, Parts List, and Profiles. Let's start with the third option, Profiles. This section has blurbs about some of the designers that worked on the set, which I find very unusual. I feel LEGO traditionally didn't like to disclose this kind of information, and they only recently started adding some to some adult-oriented sets. We only get to know about four people, and the content consists of just text and images, but it's an interesting read nonetheless. The parts list is surprisingly interesting as well, mainly because all the parts have names. This pretty much never happens in other instructions, but it does happen in LEGO Digital Designer. That software came out three years later and actually kept many of these names including a lot of the weird ones right up to the end. Somewhat tangentially, the UBS illustrates 2x2 two two round plates incorrectly. Uh, I don't think a version like this ever existed. Now we can finally look at the projects. UBS has seven of them with two aerial trams, so we will call it six and we will build three. The volume control looked too simple. The aerial tram took too much setup and the table cleaner did not seem unique. Hence, we decided to build the other three, the climber, the shooter, and the plotter. Additionally, for these three and the cleaner, we actually get to hear the designers talk about their models and not always in English. This set emphasizes how it takes a modular approach to building, 
but in reality, the various projects share very few modules. For example, the wall climber has more than a hundred steps of custom building and maybe half that of shared components. Like with the Droid Developer Kit, the instructions consist of browsable image and video files. The steps themselves have movable parts callouts, but we would rather have them not block the step in the first place. Of course, we built the plotter first. Nonsense Wars has a history of doing plotters. We have looked at four other ones now, two in the command center, one in the record and play, and the custom one we built with robotics discovery. The UBS plotter seems similar to the record and play plotter, where both the pen and paper move but it also has a third mechanism to raise the pen. Surely this design will work better though. Motors drive the pen and paper, but pneumatics raise the pen. This seemed weird and excessive at first, but I realized while writing that they did this to reduce the weight of the head, a surprisingly appropriate application. We spend a lot of time tweaking the paper feed. The driving wheels initially did not grip properly because we tried to use generic rubber bands and had to route them in a weird way. We also had some issues with the encoders. Lego used the same sort of design we used on the Robotics Discovery Plotter Bot, and they had the same problems. The cams spin pretty fast, and the touch sensors often miscount, though perhaps less than with the Scout. However, the inaccuracy of this system affects the UBS plotter less than our driving implementation because it goes into the X and Y axis rather than into angles. Picking up the pen also allows for a kind of soft reset. Next, we looked at the disc shooter. This build again has three degrees of freedom, rotate, load, and shoot. A dedicated motor drives each motion, and the one for the turntable has an attached encoder as well. The default programming shoots a disc to one side, another disc to the other side, and repeats until all six discs run out. This time we had to make some actual hardware changes before the model ran well. At first, the light sensor could not detect discs properly, and we thought we had to block out ambient light or adjust the thresholds in the code. Eventually, we found that we had to center the discs on the belt to get good readings, and we added some bumpers to direct them. We also made a modification to the arm on the loading hopper. The original implementation would sometimes allow discs to flip over and not load properly. Lastly, we made the wall climber, uh, perhaps more appropriately named the mesh climber. The documentation for this model stresses the programming aspect, 
but they could have made the fixed routine purely mechanical. One motor swings a counterweight back and forth, another motor moves the arms up and down, and touch sensors trigger at the end of each motion such that the counterweight moves after the arms and vice versa. Each arm has rubber bands that press it against the climbing surface, and each hand has a ratchet that grabs bars. We thought that this design could climb any mesh with a pitch less than the arm travel distance, but on a big mesh, the hands would miss bars and the counterweight would snag on them. To make the programming relevant, LEGO should have made the robot recognize when a ratchet grabbed and adjust the cycle period accordingly. Nonetheless, the climber worked well enough on a small mesh, but we still think the size and complexity is excessive for what it does. In the end, the UBS feels more multi-set than problem solving, like the advanced RIS 2.0 challenges. I think they expect models to work out of the box and we did not touch programming either. On that note, this is the end of the video. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like what we do and enjoy these clips of people talking. Welcome to the world of LEGO Mindstorms RoboSports. Click the green arrows to change channels. This is the DunkoBots Sports Network. Click on a robot to hear about a challenge. You are watching the PuckaBots channel. Hi, I'm Stephen Cannon, a master builder with the LEGO company. Welcome to LEGO Mindstorm's ultimate builder set. Within seven projects in this set, you will learn some of the skills needed to become a master builder. You will learn about the technical pro... From this screen, you can select a project to work on. Click a project button to hear a description. Then click on the Do Project button. We suggest you attempt them in the order they are displayed, but you can choose freely. Also from here, you can check out all the different modules used in the projects by clicking on the... Hej, jeg hedder Henrik Bo Dam og arbejder som master builder i Mindstorms teamet. Udfordringen i denne robot, klatrerobotten, er programmeringen. Da begge arme kører på samme motormodul, er den opbygget således, at når en ene arm kører ned, så kører den anden op. The main purpose of motor module 2 is to turn the angle of rotation. Notice that the driving gear drives another gear placed at a 90 degree angle.